just before we hand it off to everybody in this session, one thing that we came came up with this year, just from hearing about photo shelter uh, clients and users, they want to know how everyone else is doing it, right? Which is kind of what we're talking <laughs> about today. Um, but this is really this next. So we so we started our Inside Look webinar series, uh, which we've had, uh, I think, three or four of already over the last few months. And this is like the power hour that we're going to dive into and just really get uh, behind the scenes with uh, some of these amazing, amazing folks. Kristen? Absolutely. And that's why we have Terrell Lloyd up first, because Terrell is the <laughs> workflow expert, someone who I have oh, been wanting to highlight his pressure on. forever. <laughs> oh, the pressure is on. The pressure is on as soon as you put your name on that poster. Um, <laughs> and like you have said, this was really our chance to dig into the details. We've given you a lot of inspiration today, a lot of really cool stories of you know, innovation. And now we want to show you the nitty gritty of how it works. And I can't think of a better panel of people than the people we have lined up here. Up first, we're going to have Tara Lloyd joining us from the San Francisco 49ers. Then we're going to have Grant Ashton Jones, um, who's the director of Allegan Photography. And Grant is going to run a very similar workflow to Terrell, but on a totally different scale. So if you have a smaller team and you're watching Terrell give his presentation and you're overwhelmed, hang on because you're going to have another, <laughs> another chance to see how you can make it work on, with a smaller team. Then we'll have Jason Chrisley joining us from NASCAR and the team from the Carolina Panthers, Brandon Todd and Melissa Melvin Rodriguez. It's gonna be an amazing conversation, an amazing Q&A, and Terrell, I'll hand it off to you as our well, first speaker. Well, first, you. I gotta, first I gotta say here, I wanna say, you know, been some great presenters, you know, this morning and, and you guys have done a fantastic job. So I just wanna give, you know, my, you. my props to you guys Thank and, you. and everything for what you're doing. I mean, I've been up since seven o'clock watching everything. So it's been like uh, the best. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for watching for the whole day. That's why we had to do that seventh inning stretch. People are people are feeling a little stiff, but now it's time to get into the nitty gritty. It's going to be really fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I got a lot to cover. <clears throat> I'm getting started. You can see my um, presentation here. So I'm going to get yep, that started. And you'll be good to go. <clears throat> here we go. Perfect. Looks good. So there we go. So for you guys, um, I got a lot to cover within like the um, only 10 minutes. So I'm, I'm going to try to go slow, but then go at a nice pace to, to get you going. Let me give a little history about me before I get started here. It, it's funny because, you know, I used to throw pictures. I used to grow up in San Francisco. I used to throw uh, newspapers and I used to go to 49ers games when I was a kid. And so on Mondays, I used to cut out photos of the 49ers games and I would take eight and a half, 11 sheets of paper and I would cut the photos out and I'd glue them. I would make my own photo books. And now, you know, I'm the senior manager of photography services for the 49ers lead team photographer. I've been with the Niners for uh, 24 years. I just wanted to add that little story in there. Um, got a lot to cover real quick. Um, a lot of topics, but yet, you know, it kind of condensed it down. We're going to go talk about my staff a little bit, uh, our organizational structure from, you know, who we support within the organization, um, our file management workflow, uh, wireless technology, where I adapted like early on because I've been digital since like 1996 when digital first came out and we go over a little post-production and everything like that. Let's see where's my next slide there. Okay. Carol, if you just go. click on your screen, then it should allow you to move to the next one. Oh, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Sorry, in the middle. Yeah. So, you know, I have a full-time staff of uh, two. It's like, um, it's myself, the lead team photographer. I have Meg Williams. She's uh, my full-time person. Been with me for about five seasons now. I think headed into her six. Our contract photographers. Uh, one of our photographers, Michael Zagaris, has been with us for 47 years. He goes back to goes back to the Keysar days back in the day. And uh, Kim Fortino. She's been with me for you know. I think she always says I get this wrong, but I say 14 years, but she always says about 15 years. And so, and then I have about <clears throat> 10 other game day event photographers that assist throughout the season as well. You know, my thought process going in and my background was IT. So, um, you know, I've always said, let's embrace technology and work through the difficulties and develop a plan to get your images online quickly. So when digital came out and wireless came out, that was my whole goal. Leaving candles, I mean, leaving candlestick and heading into Levi Stadium. And that was one of the things I embraced early on back in 2014. Um, our organization, I mean, I look at it as from a business structure from when I used to do a lot of corporate photography, wedding photography, portraits, you know, within the building and, and within the organization, these are a lot of functions that we kind of support in the department. 
and you know from marketing uh, premium sales corporate uh, corporate partnerships you look at like our levy food services i got to do pictures of food and you'll see some of the images in that later on you know business operations so when you look at everything here it's like outside of football operations this is what me and my team have to cover uh year in and year out so really there's no off season like people say what are you doing during off season there's really no off season so the way we kind of organize all of our structures, all of our departments and what we do is basically by year. From the time I got with the 49ers, it's like, you know, it has grown since candlestick. So it's kind of like I got to go by year by year. And then within those folders, it's like every event that we shoot, everything is like dated, the name of the event. And then we break it out to, you know, all the raw files, select files. So we really break it down to where it's easy to find because we're not putting everything up on Photo Shelter that we capture throughout the year, but most of it goes up. And so as you see, you know, a couple images there and then our ownership. And so if you look at the organization, what we do, our ownership is really big in, in supporting with the foundation. You'll see the slide that comes up next, but um, there's STEAM program. It used to be STEM, but they've added the arts in there. So it's tech, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Um, so the ownership is really big in supporting the community. You know, all the students come around from the Bay Area, they pay for the buses, uh, they pay for the classes. So it's, a, it's really an educational program that they like to put on as well. And then if you look at our foundation, our foundation has been around for, it turns 30 years old this year. And last year they raised over $8 million and for to serve the community in the Bay Area and around and abroad. And as you see the picture below, you know, a lot of our players, alumni, they come out, support the foundation, helping raise money. And and I and I want to say this is one of the best um, foundations in the league, not knowing what some of the other teams do, not to take away from there, but just working with the organization for 20 something years and working with the foundation for what we do in the community is just the best. And as you see, you know, we cover a lot of events that goes on the stadium. Our stadium is like I want to say it's like a, a convention center. So we're hosting parties, events, meetings. So we have to capture all of that content throughout the year and to produce, you know, um, images going forward. You know, when you look at a lot of people look at like like myself when, you know, we just don't I just don't shoot sports. You know, my business started off in product photography, commercial photography, uh, portrait weddings, like I mentioned before. And so when they say, hey, Tara, we got to do, you know, some food photography. So then, you know, we help light my um studios team will help me light it as well and then we'll take pictures of that you look at like here we got uh, international soccer coming in um our business operations group we have uh, meetings where from the business standpoint these are all the presidents of all the teams in the bay area so we have to document that as well uh partnerships you know it, it's like working with them you know providing content for them as well our community relations department is one of the best i think around this one here is kind of close to my heart here a little bit where, you know, we, this is during Crucial Catch and this is a cancer awareness um, game that we have. And, and these are cancer survivors. And so this theme here, we did a fashion show, but then we wanted to do a photo shoot off to the side where showing their strength and in, in fighting cancer. You know, um, you know, one of my photographers, you know, it's, it's uh, Camden, she's a, you know, cancer survivor since six years now. So it's kind of near and dear to my heart when we put this on. And then we support our youth prep program as well. So let's get into a little bit of the workflow. You know, basically what we try to do, you know, from when we're capturing about almost 30,000 images during a game, you know, amongst 10 photographers, four assistants that we do, that we have on game day, we have to have some structure on how we're, you know, dividing all those images up. So this is kind of like, if you look at our overview from our folder structure from one of the games, this is how we're gonna break out all of our folders from raw game action to edited highlights, pregame detail. Um, you look at <clears throat> portrait sidelines shots, and then we break it even more out from a marketing standpoint, what's happening there. So we definitely have to be structured from what we're doing on game day. You know, So when you look at it, it it's like even pre the preparation. So the preparation is look at, you know, we gotta make sure all the cards are format formatted, gotta make sure you know, that's a stickler here. It makes sure all cameras are all time stamped. You know, uh, the wireless connection is working. Because when we left, when we left Candlestick, my whole big thing was I wanted to be able to shoot wirelessly on the field, on the sidelines, no matter where I go around the field. And that's what we did. And I'm going to show you how, how we did that in 2014 when we opened up the, the stadium. And then it's like, we're not, we're not transmitting, which all the photographers are not transmitting every image. So it's selected images that we're doing. Uh, throughout the game. Uh, we will run cards 
just to um, copy all of the footage, because you like say 28,000 images, you got to get something in the can and try to get it organized while the game is going on. So, and then post game, we do our post game edits, and then we'll upload the entire batch that evening to our network server. And then that, and most of the work starts on Monday to get it like tagged metadata and basically getting stuff up to Photo Shelter um, that day as well. You know, when, when you look at workflow too, it's like, you know, when, you know, we made the Super Bowl this past year and, you know, it's a different workflow when you're headed to the Super Bowl because now you got more responsibilities you have to do and then you have to pack and you have to make sure everything is set for you, your group of photographers that are going to be there, that's going to help you work. You know, you're packing lights for the team picture. You're packing gear for your photographers. And, you know, and then it's like everything has to be organized. And I'm kind of like an organized person. So, you know, myself, I mean, I go through everything and make sure that everything's there for me and my crew of photographers as well. And then, you know, you got to get a picture of me on, on the cases like, you know, hey, it's all done because now you can take a breather for a second. And then you got to get all these cases to Miami. And then the workflow, once we get there in the hotel, we have an area where we're set up to get the things that we're capturing throughout the week for the organization, capturing you know the, the moment in Miami and, and documenting that experience and telling that story as you, you heard through all the presentation throughout uh, today. It's all about telling the story, but everything is still planning and, and being organized for what you have to do here. And then even mapping out what you're going to do that day, because, you know, I'm not I wasn't familiar with the Miami Stadium. So we got to make sure how my crew is going to get around. How do we get in? What we're going to do? What's going to happen on game day? So that's all part of your workflow. As you can see, the board in the back on what we're do, going to do during that week and going forward. So let's talk a little bit about wireless. So in Candlestick, you didn't have the infrastructure to do wireless. And I've been doing wireless ever since wireless became, you know, functional with the digital camera. So at uh, Levi Stadium, we have 12 access points on the field. So anytime where I go around the field or me and my crew, we're, we're always going to get a connection at some point. Now, sometimes it's like now that, you know, we're in 2020, you know, now we're getting more interference. There's more things that's going on. So sometimes you'll have a few problems there, here and there, where we lose connection, but you can move to another spot and get a connection. The one thing that we don't have is land drop. So... And, and I've been thinking about that. And I see a lot of other teams are doing that too, as well. You know, like Miami's doing that. I know other teams are doing that. We do that during the Super Bowl. Um, I'm going to probably get some additional land drops for when I do have a few problems with the access point. But this has been, you know, working pretty well for me since 2014. You know, I mean, I wish every stadium has it, but they don't. But it's like, you know, I'm still pretty proud of like what we did here at Levi Stadium. So if you look at like, um, the workflow of what we do throughout the game, I kind of like just made it simple a little bit there since we're only uploading selects. If you look at here from the image there where, you know, if we're going from the field into photo shelter so they can access from web, wherever they're at, up in the press box at home, even when we're on the road. And then how we push content to our players is through socially. So if you see that, that diagram where the arrow is going there. And basically our design team, our, our web team, our social team, I mean, they're pretty... They're, you know, I think they're one of the best in the league too as well. And everybody says that, but, you know, it's like everybody's partial to their group, but, you know, they get content out, they push content out, they push it to the players as you see here from, you know, Instagram to Twitter to Facebook. So we're really getting it in real time. And back in 2014, when we set up the wireless teams were asking like, man, how are you pushing images so quickly? And, you know, like say now teams are getting a little bit better up until, you know, 2020, where it's becoming more robust to get images out so you know when you look at you know some teams or just individuals that are, that are on the call you know figure out a way how you're going to shoot wireless you know what what is the equipment that you need you know and then like you say it's critical for to get images out as everyone knows that so it's like how can you you know think outside the box and say how can i push images out a little bit quicker and then like the you know everybody knows the benefits for web for digital social um, getting content up post quickly. It's like, it's like a race. Everybody's trying to get it up in within 30 seconds. So it's kind of like, you know, everybody, so you got to figure out solutions where you're at now and how you're going to get to the next point and say, okay, I want to be faster than what I was the previous year and stuff like that. Um, then on the road, you know, it's one of the things on the road because it's like, I don't have those access points on the road. And, and some of the devices that I use, you know, this Verizon uh, wireless jetpack that I use now, it'll work 60, 70 percent of the time, depending on the stadium where we're at. Um, we'll, we have a list that we know which stadiums will work and which ones don't. And then we have to figure out a plan of what we're going to do when it doesn't work. 
Now, back in the day, we were running cards and, you know, I work with so many different cameras. So the thing is, it's like I was at a meeting with um, Sandus over at Western Digital because uh, they changed the name of Western Digital. Um, they came, they gave me a little goodie bag and they had this Western Digital wireless passport, right? And I thought about it. I said, wait a minute, I can FTP right into this wireless hard drive. So then I thought, I said, well, instead of me on the road running cards, why don't I transfer images to this wireless hard drive instead of running cards? And then we post those selects. So it went from almost, and I'm just arbitrary number, from like five minutes or seven minutes to get images from running cards to like maybe two minutes where a runner, one of my runners will come in, you see down below, they'll take the hard drive, go into the photo room, download, drop it in the photo shelter, and then our design team and web team could um, pull images and post in real time. And this is another third party um, device that I use in case uh, the Verizon doesn't work. This one here actually holds two cards, which is a Verizon card, AT&T card. So here I'm always looking for ways, how can I get a connection? And I'll use multiple devices at different times. Um, last, let's see, let's go in a little bit of post-production here. Uh, you know, photo mechanics, number one, everybody's using photo mechanic. You know, that's one number one of the tools that we use. Um, talking with Ben one time, we were at the Hall of Fame uh, judging the photo contest. He told me about this device, the Stream Deck. And I said, wow, so the Stream Deck I'll use for keywording for, you know, metadata. And also we use an application called Typernator where we can take in Typernator here, it's like you could say where I have, um, you can go forward slash or backslash 20, like the player's number, and the, you know you can input his name right there. So we'll use two different tools depending on what we're doing just to make our processes a little bit easier okay, and a little bit more robust. So with that, I hopefully uh, I didn't run through that too quickly where it was enough time, but you know it, it's like I've always you know considered my business and expectations, right? You know how to how to um, you know working as a photographer, working as you know my own business before I became full-time with the Niners, it, it's like, how, how do I create success? You know, and, and, and it's always about exceeding expectations to your, your customers, your client and so on and so forth. And, and expectations have been big because it, for me, once you exceed expectations, you know, then, you know, you did uh, a fantastic job. So with that, I said that all without taking a breath. And Amazing. <laughs> I've never seen so much great stuff packed into 10 minutes as I have on all of these <laughs> presentations today. Thank you, Terrell. And I know we have a lot more we want to talk about with you. Um, we're going to have you back for the Q&A. And also, we'd love you know, to have everybody tune in to our webinar series moving forward. We want to make sure that you get to have a little bit more time with some of these panelists. So they're going to be coming back for some webinars. Terrell, thank you so much. That was great. And now I want to introduce Garant Ashton Jones. Garant, welcome. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. Really pleased to be here. Great. Joining us all the way from the Isle of Skye. And yeah. you've been watching all day long, which is amazing, and tuning oh, yeah. in on Slack. Yeah, it was, it was quite interesting because um, Terrell and I spoke before he went to bed Wednesday night. Uh, when I got up Thursday morning, so uh, it was <laughs> interesting. We both, of course, we both live on the west coast. It's just uh, quite apart. So, uh, right, <laughs> just we different west coast. I don't know if it, my screen share hasn't come through. Go off, can send it. I we can yeah. see your screen. Can you you just need to hit um, the slideshow view, and then we'll be good to go. Yeah. It'll be slideshow and then view right. show. Perfect. Are you seeing the show now? Yep. Perfect. All right. So we'll we'll get we'll get going. So um, thank you, Kristen, and thank you, Charles. And what I hope to do is um, just go through basically a similar workflow to to Terrell, but um, we're just going to work downwards, uh, getting smaller and smaller as as we uh, go forward on this. Uh, presentation and uh, for those of you who were watching this morning um, and we're listening to Joe Polizzi and he's talking about his his, his energy uh, and the chocolate bar well we're probably just uh, slightly less than one square when you compare us to the Niners or NASCAR or the Panthers. Uh, very rare that I'm at an event so I, I tend to stay up on the island because uh, I chose to uh, swap the uh, the city life 
for, for the island life and uh, love my wildlife and uh, if Kate is still on from the LA and you ever need some photography I would be more than happy but the reality of it is uh, this is my office for most events the, the bigger events I, I do go and visit but normally as we enter the sort of fourth quarter of uh, the summer today this is uh, what you can think of as my stadium. Right, I'm just going to go through one client, which is the, the British Army, and they have one very large event and then a, a number of smaller events. And what we have to remember uh, with these athletes is they're first and foremost soldiers, but we're in the business of, with their sport, trying to be professional in, in everything we do. And uh, on the field, uh, they pride themselves on their teamwork, and off the field, uh, we like to pride ourselves on our teamwork, and that is Allegan Photography with our freelancers, uh, copywriters on the big event, and then linking in with the army to uh, Kimberly, who does their social media. I know many of you won't have heard of Rugby Union, but it's similar to your NFL, and our biggest armed forces sport and event is the Army Navy game, which is similar to your Army Navy NFL game. Uh, annual match, first played in 1878, and it's played at one of our national stadiums, uh, 82,000, and um, we as a company, we, we're there at the event supporting the Army Navy game, which is its own organization, as well as supporting the British Army, as well as supporting the, the Royal Navy. And I do attend this event, at the stadium, so I'm there as the picture editor coordinator, and I've got Ethernet pitch side or up on the media box, and I have two dedicated copywriters and eight photographers, of which five are dedicated to what's happening on the field, and three are looking at uh, what's happening around because we have to market this game for 12 months of the year. Um, the plan for 2020 until COVID came along was uh, four of the photographers would be on Ethernet and all their images come in direct to their folder in Photo Shelter, three on Wi Fi, and I've got one as a card runner. Uh, and the simple reason for that is his equipment isn't Wi Fi enabled. He's a serving Army soldier, he's a great photographer, and although I'm very keen on pushing technology, as I said, it's about the team and he provides great images and I don't think we should lose sight of that. But photographers have their roles so that we can, as you're hearing, capture the different aspects of the story that unfolds during the day, uh, having worked with the event as to the images that are likely to be, you know, important to them, make sure that we're capturing them at all angles. This is in the tunnel, just going up the locker room. Uh, and trying to make sure that we have the content to build both the real-time story and the story to market next year's event. The bottom line there, of course, it's, it's about the action. And um, we aim that the first um, photograph with the cup will be out with a full match summary uh, 80 seconds after uh, the cup is presented. But before that, we've put a a smaller summary out 30 seconds after final whistle and we tend to use uh, an image of the uh, man of the match because we get a couple of minutes notification of that and we normally know how the game is going to be written up if it is really tense and it goes down to the wire then you just take away the 30 seconds you you delay it slightly because you've got to be right then on field action we can't get away from it. That's what we're there to capture. And we're aiming for 90 seconds to 2 minutes, 10 seconds of in-game action captioned up with copy text going out on the social media so that people can follow the game as the action happens. And then, as always, it's just remembering that uh, never forget the unexpected photograph because it'll get you somewhere 
in the marketing away from the event. Now, in some ways, that's the easy part of the game. It's a big event, reasonably good budget, and I can have a team. But what we're now going to look at is taking that process into a smaller venue. And just as Terrell said, um, you know, it's the Wi-Fi router, 4G Wi-Fi router, and thinking through your processes that, that unlocks this. And uh, we have the little yellow boarded Wi-Fi router there, which we're just going to stick in a photographer's pocket. And uh, not forgetting the fundamentals, but it's still about capturing the images, even if you're with a smaller team and you might have to compromise in some cases. So Grant, welcome back. We're excited. I heard uh, there was maybe some lightning on the Isle of Skye just yeah. now, so we uh, we lost you for a sec. No, sorry about that. We, we, we've worried. got a bit of a storm going on outside, but uh, we're on backup comms, so uh, always have a, uh, have a have a second uh, uh, second option for you. So let's just get um, through a typical workflow. So seven concurrent events. I'm up on the Isle of Skye. And uh, for the army, we've got their women playing in Exeter, their, their men playing in Coventry, which are two away matches for them. And uh, we, we've written everything through uh, Photo Shelter, and um, each photographer has his own folder, which I can monitor. I, if I'm putting out the social media direct um, on their behalf, I, I use Hootsuite. And we often use on one to hold some template if. We have a slightly slower workflow and we want to put out something slightly different than just an out of camera image. Two photographers, one at each. So one at each game. So you've got to compromise. You're not going to get the same amount of photography that you would with a bigger team. Uh, they're transferring at uh, 1924 pixels so that we get the speed on the JPEGs and working with them, uh, you, you have to get in tune that they know what you're looking for, which is sometimes to have some images in the bank so that you can put something out. Uh, they fire those through their uh, pocket 4G Wi-Fi. And uh, on this day, Kim Woodley, who works for the Army for the Union, does their social media output. So she was at the Coventry game. And uh, we just link her through FileFlow, so on her phone. And um, we give her access to both the photographer's um, folders because we've worked together, we've got the trust. And I know that if there's a dead image that has been uploaded by mistake, she won't use it. And she then just adjusts the crop and we'll send it out on the, uh, uh, on the social media direct from uh, FileFlow. So putting it all together, that's a fairly simple schematic of how the information is flowing, where both Kimberly and I can be running the outputs, two photographers, two games, and um, on this day we were um, running a sort of interlinked output to the social media, telling the story that went up after the men's game. And if you see on the right hand side, we've got a, a grid as the, the story was told. And uh, I was outputting from uh, Neil down in Exeter and Kimberly outputting from uh, uh, Lee up in, in Coventry. So small team, to be reasonably effective, just have to accept some compromises. We also look um, at full text reporting. So again, just show you very quickly an example. This was a two person setup. So I was actually at the game, so I was in the stand doing the social media and Lee was again photographing so just about to start the game 27 minutes on third try for the army Bombardier, Lance Bombardier Gibbs goes over for short range conversion missed typo in there army lead 17-5 after 27 minutes telling the story through social media we're putting out these regular updates in a template that we were playing with and at the end of the day we ended up with story of the match. Two people, one photographer, one person who had the context of being at the game um, and was typing it up. But we do work sometimes with just the photographer at the game and no one else. 
um, we put real pressure on our photographers who then have to uh, not only send us photographs through, but they'll also text us context, and we'll then put that out on their behalf. And uh, we're just now experimenting using open telephone lines um, while the photographer is working. So he'll give me up at Sky a running commentary of the match, and I'll take the images and, and put them out. So they were representative games, but again, we come down another level, we come down to unit level. So this is just an effect on the park. And, um, you know, you still want to produce great imagery and we're still putting out great imagery. When it's tightly cropped, you, you can't actually tell that it's not in the stadium, but we're still telling the story of the, uh, the, the matches. And these have a real um, use and power for the army because they're dependent on their unit to release their players to represent the army uh, eventually end up in the army navy match and for me you know if we can this is at the the army's home stadium which is a small stadium but you know for this guy from the infantry winning the uh one of their cup finals that image is as important as if it took place on uh at twickenham and you know if we can capture that and get it out uh, as part of the story at all levels it uh, it shows that um you know, we're working for the organization and not just at the, the highest end where it gets the big crowds, gets the TV, et cetera. But we're not only using photo shelter to be, be dynamic. I mean, many of you now with COVID, you're used to remote working, but we, we work remotely as, as, our, as our modus operandi and, and we're always distributed. So this is just a, a slower workflow where we're taking match imagery and this is a, a, an experiment to turn it into a comic for kids. Um, big thing for uh, the, the army, as you can imagine, is, is Remembrance Day and the 100th anniversary of uh, World War I. Uh, we tried to produce something a little bit special and putting it together so that the wider story of how the, the army as a soldier interacts with their past and with their sport. Um, and again, you know, I'm using different photographers, different graphics people, uh, all through photo shelter so that they can just uh, get the access. Uh, and then finally, the conscious that, um, you know, memories are created and we want to capture them. And one of the pet uh, passion projects I had was when they get their honours cap to try and do that justice and uh, so we we were given permission in the army a very supportive and us experiment and so we, we took lights into their change room and this is straight after the match so that grime is is as the player was coming off having played a full pitch a full match and then what we were fortunate with is because we had the lights there we had a player with a little bit of a blood which just told the story as far as we were concerned and uh, gives you a great image, powerful image that uh, you can feed in as you tell your story. So that's about what I've got to say. Thank you very much. That was amazing. It is so cool to see how your team works, get, works together across like so much space and time it's very awesome to see how you and your team work together even when you're not in the same place um making this workflow <laughs> just completely seamless it's very cool jason chrisley from nascar welcome jason welcome how are you we're doing great and we're having a lot of fun today um and i will hand it over to the two of you perfect awesome thanks jason well, thank you. So I'll jump right in. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Jason Chrisley. I work with NASCAR Digital Media. Uh, I've worked with NASCAR since 2007, primarily in PR and communications. And as many of you know and have experienced and have talked about today, the PR and comm side has heavily had a heavy dose of content and social media as brands and leagues uh, have worked to better define those different roles. Uh, but I'm now over NASCAR Digital Media. I'm not a photographer, but I did uh, marry one which is why you guys get a backdrop and not my bedroom where my office is located currently. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go through a little bit of an overview and then I'm gonna delve a little bit into 
the system that we operate. Um, so most people know NASCAR uh, for the Cup Series that runs on Sunday, the Daytona 500, Dale Earnhardt, and more recently, Bubba Wallace. Uh, we also have the second tier NASCAR Xfinity Series, and then we have the NASCAR Gander Outdoor RV Truck Series. Even beyond that, we have five regional tours, uh, smaller circuits that run in uh, geographic pockets in the country. We sanction a series in Europe, we sanction a series in Mexico, and we sanction a series in Canada. And then on top of that, we also sanction more than 50 tracks across the United States and Canada, uh, basically your Saturday night local short tracks, which in many cases, each individual ecosystem has their own officials, their own administration, but also their own social and digital content and their own photographers. So my job is to act as sort of an air traffic controller for all of these series. So while we may run at Daytona with its top line amenities, um, we also run at short tracks in the middle of nowhere with limited Wi-Fi and even more limited uh, resources. So each situation and logistic is different, as is each opportunity. Uh, the biggest commonality in terms of strategy is capturing the moments that help us uh, fall in love with racing. And that's uh, the moments that we see that, that stick with us. And then we want to share those moments with our fans. And then hopefully from there, create new fans. Um, you hear it all the time, racing is about you know, going around in circles. But for us, the story that we want to tell is that racing is so much more than that. Um, obviously, it's, it's competition, it's cars, um, wrecks are cool, uh, but so are personalities. So it's a lot about uh, people talk about showing behind the scenes and capturing those moments that stick in our subconscious. But when we see the pictures and the images, we remember, yeah, that's cool. That's what I love about NASCAR. That's what I love about racing. Uh, on the national level, we have a contract with Getty Images. Uh, on the lower tier, uh, we've partnered with Adam Glansman out of New England. I'm sure some of you all know him from his work at the Red Sox in Northeastern. Um, in addition to shooting a bunch of stuff for us, uh, he also works on staffing our photographers for all of our regional series. So because of that, um, we get a lot of different photographers shooting our events. Um, I actually love when we get great shooters who have never shot NASCAR or racing before because they often see the same thing that I've seen 10,000 times over my you know, 10 years at NASCAR, but they're able to capture it in a, in a unique way. And it really kind of reminds me like, hey, those are the little details that stick with you. That, that's the reason we love this sport. So at the end of the day, from the sanctioning body role, the key is taking the content, whether it's a Getty Images photo, whether it's a freelance photographer who took the image, or whether it's just something that I took on, on my phone, it's coming up with ways to share it both internally and externally. So the biggest advancement we made probably in the last two years is just to better organize all of those various buckets. We've had departments that had photos on their own internal servers, um, on their own hard drives, on their own external hard drives, photographers who use Google Drive, they use Dropbox, they use their own websites. And we're getting requests, as I've heard from you guys, uh, the same. Um, from brand and from marketing, from communications, from our business units, from our sales units, from our teams, from our tracks. Uh, there's a lot of stakeholders, both internally and externally. So our goal and our job from a sanctioning body perspective is kind of serve all those different parties effectively and efficiently. Um, you know, it wasn't too long ago when somebody needed a photo, it was, hey, email Jason and see if he has it on his hard drive. So. Um, Thank God for, for modern technology. I want to give a shout out to uh, Lizzie Seedhouse from uh, USL, who actually first turned me on to, to Photo Shelter. So <clears throat> we'll show a little bit of a peek behind the curtain um, and go through that a little bit. Uh, not a big fan, honestly, of folders. I know uh, it's a different workflow for different people. Um, we typically divide them by year, then by series, and then by race. We do heavily rely, though, on keywording and metadata. So that allows us both to service internal and external needs in an efficient and effective time manner. So, um, you know, as you all know, each department, each person has different needs. So I oversee our social content on our regional and international level. So when a social need, media person needs something for Instagram, it's going to be different than what our New York office needs for building a sales deck or brand needs from building a PowerPoint template. So. Um, we recently raced at Ohio with no fans and very restricted personnel, which meant 
that our shooter was the only one at the event. So on one hand, we're capturing and aggregating compelling images. Um, we're also serving as the pool photographer. So we needed to distribute those photos immediately after the event. So while the one on the right uh, with Ty Gibbs and just the, the sponsor um, uh, and the trophy is something that the team wanted and the sponsor wanted and the series needed to get to that sponsor, while the one on the left was probably the more engaging and uh, image that we wanted to use on social media. So, and I know I flipped it up, up a couple of slides, but I'll go back. But um, what this has allowed us to do is uh, put everything in a kind of an aggregated format and be able to, to find it easily and get it to somebody uh, and, and service a lot of those different asks. And I've heard that throughout the day that we're always getting inundated with a, a player needs this or a team needs this or somebody needs this. So using you know our process with the keywords and metadata um if uh you know somebody's doing a story on uh haley deegan they need photos of her win from meridian idaho from a couple years ago or max siegel emails yesterday and needs some photos uh for a tv interview that uh with bubba wallace uh when bubba ran for max siegel uh in 2010 within five or ten minutes we can locate those back, back batch of images select them and then get them out to the to the uh, person who's asking for them. Another great example was uh, last year, Justin Haley won at Daytona in July in a race that was shortened by rain. Uh, he was probably the last person in the field that we expected to win that race. Uh, he's also a former champion of one of our, our regional series. So working through Slack, and that's the, the communication that we uh, use internally with NASCAR Digital Media. Uh, somebody said, hey, do can we get a get photo gallery of all the drivers who have won championships at a regional series and gone on to win a cup race? Um, and from start to finish, within about five minutes, because of our keywording and our metadata, we're able to kind of aggregate all of those images, winnow it down to, to one uh, in the touring series of the championship, and then one when they won the cup race um, for each driver, and get that gallery over to uh, .com and upload it onto NASCAR.com. Um, and that's really kind of the premise of what we do and what I'm in charge of is just kind of making sure that all those different asks and requests, whether they're coming from uh, a team or somebody who's doing a media availability or somebody who is internal, um, can be can be handled quickly. Um, but we can also get the images that we wanted to to get out and not just say like, hey, here's the folder, go pick the images that you need. Um, it allows us a little bit of a control. Um, but also allows us to do it quickly and um, efficiently. Um, and a, one last uh, example is we had a driver from Israel in our Euro series who made his debut last summer in Sonoma, California. So New York Times goes to do a story on Alain Day. So now we need to get a photo of a driver who won races in Europe, uh, in England and Italy, who's now racing in California and we need to get those to the New York Times within 50 minutes to an hour. With the system, with all the metadata and all the tags, we've got that covered. So that kind of wraps up. Um, I don't. I saw Durant uh, pop up quickly. So uh, Kristen, I don't know if we want to go back to Durant or. We do. Yes, that would be great. Jason, thank you so much, and thanks for jumping in. Up next, we're going to have the Panthers team, Melissa and Brandon, come on up. Hey, Brandon. You doing? Great. We're so excited to have you guys. Here we go. Fantastic. And then we'll get into our Q&A. The results are in and people love workflow and they have a lot of workflow questions. So we're excited about this Q&A. Um, Brandon and Melissa, I'll let you guys take it away. Sounds good. Well, happy Thursday to everyone. First and foremost, thank you for tuning in and Photo Shelter. Thank you for having us. Um, uh, so um, my name is Brandon Todd. I'm the lead photographer at the Carolina Panthers. I am one half of the Panthers photo team, uh, also with Melissa Melvin Rodriguez. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, our game day workflow. So it's broken up, to, broken up into three phases, where it's front end workflow, game time, and then the back end. Um, in the front end, we like to create game day folders and set up on-field access for all our photographers who may be shooting that day. So I'll take you through our folder setup quickly. Um, we like to label our folders year, uh, month, and then date. 
So that just keeps everything organized. Um, we're, we're able to access it easy on our end. And, and same thing with um, our staff, social media, website, anybody in our digital media office um, that needs to access can access in the same way. So what we'll do before the game, um, either the, the day of or uh, you know days before, we'll go in and, and make certain folders. So what you see here is I'll have a game folder, Melissa will have a game folder. The reason we do that is because you never know who's shooting what. So if I know I'm shooting intros um, and Melissa's not shooting intros, it would be easier for somebody to go access my folder and go straight to that intro folder within that um, and, and access that photo easy. Um, another big uh, folder we do before the game is in-game edits. So during the game, and, I, and I'll touch on this later on, during the game, we actually push photos photos into uh, FTP live and our photo editor will go in and put it in this folder to where you know everyone can access social media, again, website, anyone who needs the photos right there live. Um, and this game angles folder is something that I created this year. And it really is like a best of gallery for, you know, after the game, something we put out directly after the game or, or the next day. Um, just, you know, the best abstract shots, game, game action, pre-game, um, just something fans like. Um, going on to our on-field connection. So um, I know Terrell uses wireless, but we actually do wired still. So um, I came in and, and we kind of adopted this system. Um, I was working under Dan Spikowski at the Jets and you know he, he's the one who kind of put this in my ear and showed me how to do this. So big shout out to Dan Spikowski. But um, we, we came in and what we'll do is we'll have an ethernet set up on our field. Um, it's a connection box that looks just like this. We usually have two in our stadium um, on the 20 yard line, both, both end zones. Um, and in stadiums have it all over the league. I know Atlanta does a great job. They have it essentially everywhere. So um, that's a great stadium. They, uh, they have easy access points. And what we'll do is we'll just plug up um, straight to the ethernet spot to our camera. And that allows us to push the photos to an FTP real time. Takes no more than three seconds to, to get the photos in there. So real fast, real efficient. Um, during game time, our biggest thing is capturing the moment, obviously, but pushing the images real time to social media and website staff. And also again, the field placement between our photographers. So just to talk on the field placement quickly, um, our biggest thing is making sure that Melissa and I aren't in the same spot or capturing the same image from the same angle. Um, I think it's important, you know, if you have two photographers or more to, to spread out and be, being able to capture every, every angle possible, you know? So this is just a breakdown of our red zone um, setup. So whenever we're in the red zone, Melissa and I will split the end zone. We're either, you know, in, in the actual end zone or off to the side where we can capture the play from every angle. Um, whenever the, the ball is within the 50 or the 40, we usually stay on opposite ends of the field, um, opposite sides, I should say, excuse me. And so we can capture the whole field um, as a whole. And you just want to be mindful to be close to those connection points. So, you know, if Christian McCaffrey has a crazy run, we can, you know, run right to the, to the connection point, plug in and get the, the photo to our team within seconds. Um, and uh, of course, some stadiums don't have the connection points that close and some stadiums, connection points are a bit older. So, you know, sometimes when you're at a Green Bay, it was my first time at Green Bay this year, but Green Bay was a, you know, a bit of an older stadium. So it had a slower connection, um, you know, when it comes down to the ethernet, but nonetheless, it's still an efficient um, streamlined system that we have. Um, what what will happen is just to touch on the, uh, the FTP quickly, we'll plug up directly to our camera. In the camera, the FTP settings are already set to go back to this right here, incoming folder that you see. Um, the incoming FTP folder pushes all the images in their raw, and from there, our photo editor can take it out, put, put our preset on it, our unique look, and then push it to our social media team. Um, the, the biggest thing I like to say is we want to be fast and efficient, but we don't want to give the people fast food. So what I mean by that is, yeah, we, we want to be able to push out fast images, but we want to make sure it's the best image possible. We want to make sure it has our distinct look. It has our preset. So when you see it on the Panthers account, it's not out of whack with the rest of the timeline or the rest of the feed. It looks like our, one of our photos is, is um, you know, treated properly. And um, it's, it's just the best, most efficient way of doing things. So on our back end, we tag photos in Adobe Bridge or Photo Mechanic. And uh, we organize player photos, uh, folders, so we can um, easily distribute the photos. So this is our keyword system, mine specifically. I use Adobe Bridge for a keywording. Um, we use a real detailed keyword system to where 
anybody who is in our organization can access the photos, you know, in seconds just by typing in certain words. So we have every player, we have abstract, which is black and white, you know, real um, artsy type of shots. We have touchdown, interception, anything that you can think of, we try to tag to these photos. So what will happen is you can go into our portal, click Christian McCaffrey, or type in Christian McCaffrey rather, and Saints, and it'll give you all the pictures of Christian McCaffrey playing the Saints. I can get even more details saying Christian McCaffrey Saints touchdown. It'll show you all the touchdown images from from him playing the Saints. And this do, doesn't just apply to one year, it's all year. So you can go back into 2016, do the same thing and find photos of that, that same um, keywords uh, specific title. Um, something new this year that we're, we're implementing is taking our photo shelter capabilities uh, another step further and actually implementing FileFlow. Um, if you haven't downloaded it, it's a great app. I, I recommend you download it. Um, FileFlow will allow us to push images to our players um, without the, the regular way we usually do it. I made a joke um, on our, our test call that, you know, most players usually text, text us directly. Hey, man, can I get that photo? You have that, that practice photo or something like that. Um, it's cool to be able to contact with, uh, be in contact with the players like that, but oftentimes it leaves me, um, you know, frustrated. Sometimes I, I can't get it to them as fast as they want. Other times my phone just gets filled up with data. So um, this is a way that we can give players access to their own folder and they can go in and get the, fo the photos whenever they want. So what'll happen is they'll download file flow and just like you can set certain permissions, we'll give the player permission only to his folder. So right here, you see our number one overall draft pick this year, um, Derek Brown. I set up his folder so he can only see this. Um, obviously, players that have been on the team for a bit longer can see 2019, 18, et cetera. But Derek Brown will only be able to go in and see his folder. Once he's logged in, he'll be able to see every photo that's actually in his folder in which he can you know, download in bulk, download a single photo, or actually if he's using this middle icon here next to downloading in the bulk, he's able to push directly to social media from this file flow app. Um, it's, a, it's a great tool. We're, we're looking forward to you know, implementing it and, and getting it up and running in our system um, this year once we get past COVID-19 and get back into the building. But we're, we're very excited that, you know, Photo Shelter came out with FileFlow and it's an easy way to, you know, push it right to our um, players. So um, again, looking forward to that. And Photo Shelter, thank you for FileFlow because it makes our lives super easy. Um, and thank you. And uh, that's my part of it, the workflow. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Melissa who will show you you know, what happens to these photos after we take them in the days after the game? Um, we do some really unique and cool things with them. So thank you. Hi, guys. Um, and uh, thanks to Brandon for that really great presentation on, on how we work um, with our file flow, um, our workflow process. Um, a big thing with having that um, having a, a an actual process to that is that uh, that workflow makes it easier for us to capitalize on the various ways in which we can use our images and one of those ways is um, new ways to generate opportunities with sponsorship um, and one of the one of the big parts that we have um, or that we had this past season um, is my view um, a little background on that. I have been with the team uh, since 2015 full time. And in 2017, I saw this really cool um, thing that a, a photo friend of mine was doing, Mike Mulholland. He's with M Live in Michigan. And he was doing this really cool thing where he was writing about his photos, um, just kind of a behind the scenes, either you know through the process or um, just kind of giving a little more background on what he what he saw that day. And I thought that would be a really great and unique way to engage the fans through photos, not only just through through galleries where they are just kind of they're they're seeing the photos, they're clicking through. Um, this would be a new way to to get them involved and get them um, to really connect with with the moments that we are capturing. Um, so writing about the photos gives a unique behind the scenes look because we're able to go in places where they can't, but then we're also able to pick up on certain little nuances in moments then and maybe we can write in that um, and they get to 
read about that, you know, and that would be something that they wouldn't be able to pick up on or know if they just looked at a static photo. So it's it's um, it's kind of bringing them deeper into the image. Um, it's also a really cool way to let fans and even other photographers or um, anyone who may just be interested in photography uh, lets them know about our process and the techniques that go into capturing a big moment. Um, this past year, um, we have found um, a great way to, um, hold on one second here. Um, sorry guys. Um, we have a, a sponsor this year. Um, it's Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose and Throat. And you can see the logo there um, right above some of the articles. And it goes on all the thumbnails. So people see that it is a sponsored piece of content. Uh, when this started in 2017, it started as my take. Uh, but since we have a, an ENT, we changed the name to My View to, to fit that sponsor. Um, so when we had that sponsor, we were committed to writing at least eight stories throughout the season. Um, and Brandon and I both switched off on some of those. If he had a really cool photo um, or a really great moment that I didn't get, then he would say, hey, I'm going to write them uh, my view this week. Or if I had a, a, an idea beforehand, even like, hey, I think this is going to be something that's going to be um, really awesome to write about. <clears throat> I'll take care of the my view uh, for this week. So, um, as, and as you can see here, a few examples there on the side with, um, you know, whether it's a moment, a touchdown with Curtis Samuel there, um, kind of being <laughs> in disbelief of, of that moment. Um, the Reed brothers in Houston. Um, there was also this one here in the corner where it says, my view of football of hope. Um, and that was, um, I think I might need to skip ahead here. Um, that one was the uh, one that was written back in 2000, uh, 2018 when we had Hurricane Florence and some people on the East Coast of North Carolina were displaced uh, due to the hurricane. And uh, that also kind of coincided with the weekend that we were playing in Atlanta. Um, there was a moment where uh, Cam Newton did his um, end zone giveaway, the, the Sunday football giveaway, and he ended up giving it to a kid who was in the end zone. And they had this sign um, that said that, you know, the hurricane wasn't going to keep them from, you know, keep, keep pound, keeping pounding, um, which is kind of our our team's uh, motto. And um, so I, I wrote about that. I, I reached out to the family and uh, got talked to them a little bit about what they were experiencing, how much it meant to their kid, um, to their son, because it was a huge moment for him. Um, just to give you a little perspective on how much of an impact that specific piece had, um, all of our article views for my view that year uh, were a little over 48,000, but 48,114. Um, that this article alone had a little over 30,000 views on it. So um, it had a really big impact. Um, and I think people were able to connect with it even more knowing the backstory, um, knowing that this family had been displaced because of this major event. Um, and then they, they got to connect with the team and they had this really, really fantastic, powerful moment that they're able to kind of get a little bit more backstory on. Um, so that that ended up being a really fantastic piece of content. Um, and so a, another way that we try to utilize our photos in a different way is through our joint Instagram feed, which is Panthers Photog. Um, and I started that again back in the 2015 season, but it's been a really great new way for us to um, add additional images, uh, either to engage with fans and give them some different images that they're not seeing on the main feed. Um, also, maybe just photos that, that Brandon and I really like a lot, and uh, we know they may not see the light of day, um, and we just want to put them out there to, to showcase our work. And also, um, it shows more social love for some of the players. Um, 
you know, if maybe it's a, a player that doesn't get featured a whole lot, maybe we can put them on the Panthers photog feed and they still get out there uh, with a tag, they get uh, different photos. Um, it's also a really great way for us to link galleries, um, either through a link in their profile or utilizing the swipe up feature. And um, so here's the account, some of the posts, um, you know, and some examples of photos that we feel, you know, this is a really amazing shot by Brandon. And, um, you know, it's a shot that didn't exactly make it to the main feed for one reason or another, but it's a really great detail shot, um, you know, with the tape on the fingers right before a pregame. Um, there's a shot of Cam walking down to the practice field and I believe that made it to a main feed, but there, you know, with Panthers Photog, there's a space for it to live. Um, and also, again, to give fans just a different view, another photo of something that happened uh, that day. There's also, um, you know, if we use different abstract techniques, kind of what Brandon was saying, uh, a label that we use for our photos, then there, there's, this is a new way, this is a new place for them to live and for us to showcase that work. So um, that's, that's it for me. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Melissa. I want to invite all of our panelists back up. Melissa, I want to give you a special shout out. We had talked to Melissa about an event like this for NFL photographers a long time ago, and that idea really evolved into this day. So thank you, Melissa. Thank you to all of you guys for just putting together some amazing workflow sessions. The Q&A is buzzing on Slack, so I want to keep that going there. Um, but I know we have a lot of uh, tagging questions. We are very short on time, so I want to do an, a lightning round Q&A. What is your number one tip for tagging and organizing your content? Melissa, you want to kick it off? Um, I would say um, number one tip is uh, something that Brandon brought up. We have a list of the act of all the tags that we use so i'm not using different tags than he's using so we're on the same page we're, we're united so if you're working with a team make sure that everyone is on the same page and you have a, an agreed upon list of the tags that you all are using love that brandon um yeah uh just to echo melissa i just just be as detailed as possible i think that it, it'll be much easier for everyone to find what they're looking for if they're detailed so even if you have to put three or four tags on something where it's christian mccaffrey touchdown saints just go all out because you know you never know what somebody's looking for so go all out be detailed with your tags and and that'll help you out love it terrell i would say um also too like for what they said but it's like the tools that you use too it's like you got to research you know what tools are out there to make it easier for you the process so adding adding to what melissa and brandon said look in the tools and applications garant i keep on top of it <laughs> good one it's like, making, it's like making the bed you got to do it every day just keep on top of it i yes. love it that's a great one jason yeah and like they all said having a list but also you know we have a template for since we have so many different photographers and series having a template for the caption because photo shelter also pulls from the caption making sure that it is the same way uh that's one of the biggest things that we make sure that's on the shot list and then a lot of the other stuff behind the scenes we'll go back and tag an event uh specific and then we have that cheat sheet of like crowd shot single car multi-car victory lane stuff that we may know specifically so we'll do that post events but making sure the photographers are as well armed as possible ahead of time that's all great advice. We want to keep this conversation going. I think that we could have a whole nother summit devoted just to workflow and inside look. I mean, I think the results on Slack are obvious that people have a lot of questions about this. Please keep the conversation going over on Slack. Thank you to all of our presenters for this section. That was most certainly a power hour. Thank you. Thanks for Thank having us. So Appreciate it. Great job, guys.